right towards the end of the Mesechta, Gemara says, brings, Im re'isa do she'ein ha-terech aviv alav. See a generation that doesn't value Torah, doesn't have a, an appreciation of what Torah is. I don't know if you can imagine such a thing, but it does happen occasionally in history, right? Kanes, Shenema, Eislase, Eislashem, Ofer, Torosecha. So Rashi says, and there are times when you have to go out, you have to be mitpazer, to, to go out to be makarev, and there are times when, when the others are not doing it, and there are times we have to focus on your own learning if there are others doing that. Essentially, it's a, it's, it's a capsulization of the of the b'mokom she'enish, when you, there isn't somebody doing what has to be done, then you do it. It's a very uh, unusual pshat that the Shaloha Kodesh has on that posik, Eis Lases L'Shem Ofer Torosecho. The Shaloha says, if you limit your sense of what Torah is, and your Torah obligation to certain hours of your, of your life, certain portion, a certain section, then you're, you're rejecting, you're denying the Torah. Because it's the totality. It's everything. Dovina Melech says in, in Tilim that the I started to go someplace, and then uh, I turned around and I seemed to go, be, go the other direction. Most learned that, that he was going one place, which was a Dovo Sheber and <coughs> he said, no, I better go back to the base Medrash. Libi Oymeli, there's another pshat there, is that I first thought I was leaving the base Madush. But then I reassessed it and I recognized what the Shalom is saying. It's not leaving. There's a Teredika way to do business. There's a Teredika way to do whatever has to be done. So I'm not leaving the base Madush. I'm now thinking, but Gisabo Yom of I can be a Makayim. David Amalek says, like, the cold tichle, everything, everything, every goal in life has an end. But mitzvah secha, uh, there's no boundary, there's no limitation to what can be drawn. It's the totality of our, of our existence. Gemor, Daushans, actually it's a svora that when a guy brings a korban to the Reis Migdash, they honored it, but it was always treated as a korban ola. Kulo kolil. Because now he's engaged in Ruchnias. A Jew can bring a shlomim because he can partake of eating, and eating is, he can make a grill, right? and use it, the Shem Mitzvah. And the Gemara says, it's not a drash from a posik. It's a, an analysis of the psyche of the non-Jew. Libo la He can, can't conceive of utilizing the Olam Gashmi for Ruchnius. That's why there can be 12 shvotim, each with its mahalach, each with its personalized sense of subjective appreciation and exhilaration in what they're doing. We know Shema Keno Aleinu, us. And again, Konino Aleinu, only Basof you get from the subjective to the objective, koninehu. 
but you can't deny that your starting point is my sense of myself, my sense of having pleasure, excitement, enthusiasm, my sense of appreciating that the Rebbe Nisham has endowed me with certain abilities and talents. And so the, the key to understanding who we are, what we are, is not to deny our need for personal expression or pleasure, but to focus it, to channel it in a manner that it will be productive. Basically, that's the parsha we just read, that the Yaakov admonishes Shimon and Levi for being too aggressive, zealous in the Mysa with, with Dina. Careful read of it, of course, is that they Anche Shem Wormachui of Misa, whether it's like the Ramban or, or others for, for idolatry or not keeping the Shevim Mitzvahs B'nai Noach, whichever. And Yaakov's, Yaakov's Toichocha is pragmatic. That you, you now have befouled my waters in relation to the, to the, to the Tzibu. It's not the time, I'm, we're not ready yet to go to war with the nations around us here yet. It was just the wrong move, wrong timing. Shevet Levi captures that indignation, sense of outrage and passion for justice, and they utilize it by the Chet Eagle, Mila Shem Elai, as a corrective. They've turned it and utilized it. Shimon indignantly aggressive, wanting to not just indulge in an error, but to demonstrate it publicly. That's where Zimri comes from. And it's the confrontation between Shimon and Levi, as has been pointed out, that someone who's captured the natural proclivity and somebody who has submitted and given in to it. It's all the difference in the world. It's Kiddush Hashem or Chilul Hashem. And it's utilizing the given. Every one of us has our given. Klad Yisrael, Haske Sushma, the Gemara says a few, a few lines later on Omid Beis, that say Kitos Kitos that haske sushma, kitos, kitos, break into groups, different programs, right? Like Osamech. Kitos, kitos. Not alone, Kherval Abadim, because when you're relying on Svora, on Seichel, in the introduction to Mesechta Brochus, the, the riff, says that Svora has a state of preeminence in our th understanding and our approaching the world because we have to learn how to be critical. You can't be critical without using, utilizing Svora. On the other hand, the supremacy of application of Svora can only come from somebody who's immersed in Torah and knows where and how to critique that there are variables here that transcend what I can understand. I have a better probability if it's kitas kitas, if I'm learning in a chabura, that they're going to correct me. But even when that doesn't happen, it's only when, it's only when it, we're all immersed in learning and we're trying to utilize the subjective. It's an obstacle course. And we want it monitored, gauged in a manner that we have a better shot at being successful. Shem Yitain, that these days, the <coughs> when right has become left and left has become right, 
and when uh, over a billion shekel can be given to our B'nai Dodim to join a government which they walked away from when we were being attacked by their B'nai Dodim. Does it sound sugar? Yeah. And always keep in mind, I'll end with this. Remember the story of the guy who gets the flat tire in front of an insane asylum? In the years when we used to change tires ourselves. It's taking off the bolts, takes off the hubcap, puts the bolts in the hubcap, puts on the spare, accidentally kicks the hubcap, and the bolts go rolling down into a sewer. He's standing there. What do I do now? The fellow sticks his head out of the insane asylum. He says, listen, what you should do is take one bolt off each one of the other tires. You'll have three on each tire, and it'll surely hold until you get to a, to a gas station. So he looks up and he says, what are you doing there? I never would have thought of that. You're there and I'm here. He says, listen, I may be sugar, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, remember, it's a different area of expertise. Chazak ve'amatz, we have a lot of people around us that they're not stupid, but boy, are they sugar. <laughs>